Six Yogas of Naropa Description Hey there. So, Milarepatamo is like the starting point for something called the Six Yogas. These Yogas are Tamo Illusory Body, Clear Light, Dream Yoga, Bardo Yoga, and Foa. Let's check them out a bit more. Now, this stuff is kind of advanced, and Buddhists have been studying it for a super long time, like thousands of years. There are different ways and ideas about how to do it, and Lama Glen, who's like a teacher, mainly talks about the Naguma system, which is kind of like the feminine way. I like it, because it's super simple at its core. They've taken out a bunch of extra steps, which makes it easier. Even though the theory can get a bit fancy, the actual practice is pretty straightforward. You can feel the good results with just a daily practice, and that's pretty cool. The Naguma system has what you really need to become enlightened. It's like the simplest practice in the Six Yoga of Naropa system. There are many different schools and ideas, but they all aim for the same goal. Awesome, right? Naguma. The awesome yogini and spiritual teacher Nigima, who lived a long time ago in India, was like a superhero in the world of Buddhism. She was a yogini, which is like a wise and magical teacher, and she did amazing things to spread goodness and wisdom. Meet Naguma. Naguma was one of the coolest yoginis of her time, around the 10th or 11th century. She, along with her friend Sukhasiddhi, started something awesome called the Shangpa Kagyu School of Buddhism. It's like they founded a special club for people who wanted to learn about the magic of Buddhism. Naguma had many names like Yogini Vimalashri Vajradhara Naguma or Jana Dakini adorned with bone. It's like having cool nicknames with special meanings. She was also known as the sister, connecting her to the great Buddhist teacher Naropa, who was like her buddy. Sometimes people got a bit confused about Naguma's life story because it's like a mystery. But what we do know is that she taught a lot of amazing things and made a big impact on starting the Shangpa Kagyu school, which is one of the eight great Buddhist traditions. Naguma's magical legacy, even though we might not know all the details about Naguma's life, her teachings and the school she started continue to be super important even today. It's like she left a magical treasure of wisdom that people still follow and learn from. Naguma was a Dakini, which is like a wise and powerful spirit, and she's remembered as a fantastic spiritual teacher and founder of a special Buddhist tradition. Her magic and teachings continue to inspire people to be kind, wise, and spread goodness in the world. How cool is that? So, Naguma is like the superhero yogini from ancient times, spreading joy and wisdom for everyone to learn and grow. Tamo and Tantra once upon a time, more than 40 years ago, people were talking about this super ancient practice called Tamo. It was like a magical yoga where Buddhists sat in the snow with wet sheets and made them completely dry. Now, you might be wondering, why not just use a dryer? Well, this wasn't your regular laundry day, it was an adventure into the world of inner fire. Imagine having superpowers along the way. It's like the superheroes you see in movies, but these Buddhists were using the power of compassion. Later, a wise teacher named Lama Glen explained that Tamo's secret sauce is compassion. To be a superhero, you first need a heart full of kindness. Lama Glenn shared all these cool secrets in a two-hour Zoom seminar, like a virtual classroom where you learn amazing things. It was like a treasure map guiding people into the mystical world of Tibetan Buddhism. Now, Tamo is like the starting point for a series of yoga adventures. There are six yogas in total. Tamo, Illusory Body, Clear Light, Dream Yoga, Bardo Yoga, and Foa. Each yoga is like a chapter in a magical book. But what's so special about Tamo? Well, it's like the foundation, the first step in a superhero's training. Tamo brings infinite radiance, stillness, and formlessness into everyday life. It's like having a clear mind 
clear sight, and infinite you. Lama Glenn taught that humans experience the magic of Tantra in three ways every night when we sleep, when we make love, and during meditation. It's like tapping into the clear mind in clear light states. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Tamo involves physical exercises, like superhero training drills. You do breathing exercises to balance your energies, a bit like superheroes balancing their powers. But wait, don't try this at home without a qualified teacher. It's like learning to use your superpowers responsibly. Lama Glenn said something cool about our minds and bodies being like tuning forks. We vibrate at the frequency of our current state of mind and body. Imagine being in a magical place, but feeling all out of sorts like missing the ocean in a beautiful forest. That's what Lama Glenn calls being out of balance. The next level involves working with chakras energy centers that help speed up the superhero evolution process. It's like going from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Now, here's the real magic tummo involves the purest and most primitive energy, and it's not what you might think. It's all about the secrets of sexual energy. Lama Glenn explained that by awakening this energy, we heighten our neural system, like upgrading our superhero abilities. There are a bunch of exercises, but you only need six. Lama Glenn's favorite involves some twists and turns, but don't worry, it just needs daily practice, like mastering a cool move in a video game. And guess what? Longevity, bliss, clarity, they're all part of the superhero package when you mix consciousness and heat in the body. It's like Garcha and Rinpok, another wise teacher, said Tomo is the adventure where heat, life, and magic unite. So, it turns out, Tummo isn't just a yoga, it's a thrilling journey into the realm of fire, compassion, and unlocking the superhero within you. Dragon history and Tummo once upon a time, in the mystical land of Shambhala, there were fire dragons. Yes, you heard it right, dragons that breathed fire. When these dragons got angry, watch out, because they could incinerate anything in their path. Some poor citizens in England even felt their fiery wrath. Now, even in the early days of Shambhala, the young dragons had a bit of an issue. They had trouble controlling their anger. Despite years of meditation, this fiery problem persisted. But guess what? Fate, or was it destiny, had something else in store for them. One day, as the young dragons were wandering about, they stumbled upon something different something more subtle, the fire of life, also known as Tummo. Slowly, very slowly, these innocent dragons absorbed this ancient wisdom into their beings. As they delved deeper into Tummo, they discovered the chakra systems and channels within their bodies. They found Nadis, which are like thousands of tiny rivers flowing through their dragon bodies. Of course, in the dragon world, these things can't be seen by the naked eye, so most dragons would chuckle and snicker at such ideas. This process of exploring Tummo took about 5,000 years, even before the first young Tibetans arrived. It then took another 1,000 years for the Tibetans and Indians to blend their teachings with the dragon teachings. Surprisingly, both systems were almost identical. They understood there was a physical body and a subtle body. And guess what? They even discovered a very subtle body, which they called the Buddha body. Wait, there's more. They also uncovered the Buddha mind. An Austrian physicist named Erwin Schrödinger once said something fascinating. The total number of minds in the universe is one. Consciousness is like a singular song playing in all beings. It's like there's one universal mind or Buddha mind. And believe it or not, these stages happen every night, bringing everyone back to the source. Mystics and yogis have known this secret for thousands of years. Over time, the dragons and Tibetans developed the Tummo system. The Tibetan Buddhists, in particular, created a whole system around Tummo. While it might seem a bit complicated, 
The wise dragon Glenn Mulan simplified it so everyone could use and understand it. So, in the end, it's like this magical fire within, kindled by Tomo, becomes a powerful force. It's not just about breathing fire like typical dragons. It's about igniting the fire within, destroying negativity, and living an extraordinary life. And that's just the beginning of this fantastic dragon adventure.